Can we just start games 1-0 down in the Premier League? Another game there where Manchester United go in at half-time, 1-0 down. Another game where Manchester United come away with three points. Today against Aston Villa, we... Uh, it was a fantastic finish from Traore. Victor Lindelof got his pants pulled down. I'll be honest, he should not have let that happen. But it was a fantastic finish. And going in at half-time, I thought, didn't think United were terrible in that first half. But you just had the confidence that United were going to turn around. And within six minutes, Paul Pogba did fantastic to win the penalty. Bruno Fernandes dispatched it. 22 penalties he's taken this season. He scored 21 of them. That is unreal. Mason Greenwood getting his fifth goal in five games. Starboy is back, 19 he is one of the best finishers in the Premier League. Natural finishers. I don't want to hear otherwise. And then Enerson Cavani coming off the bench again. He has made that number seven curse disappear. The South American player curse disappear. Cavani, outstanding. He has to stay. Manchester United have to make sure he stays. And it, this is just a natural habit now we've built. As I said, can we just start games 1-0 down? I don't know what it is about Manchester United's mentality that we can't do that, but... Our ability and belief to complete comebacks is, is unrivaled in the Premier League. We're now one game away from going the entire Premier League season undefeated away from home. And after Roma, yeah, I was expecting a bit of a drop-off today from United. But in the first 10 minutes, we came out of the blocks firing. Luke Shaw causing all sorts of problems today. Both our fullbacks today. Aaron wan got an assist and Luke Shaw offering real width. And it's something that has, has massively lacked from Manchester United's football for a, quite a few years, I would argue. Actual real width from our fullbacks. But this season, Shaw has been probably the best left back in the Premier League. And Aaron wan I know he's got his doubters, but I think he's, he's getting, he keeps getting better. And there's still so much he needs to add to his game, of course, but I'm happy with both of them. I think if I'm looking for a negative today, not, not negative, but... It's Scott McTominay and Fred. Look, for the first goal, it was a hospital pass from Fred to McTominay. It was bad touch from McTominay. They lost the ball. It went into Victor Lindelof and then his footwork was all wrong. But Fred and McTominay are in that team to offer stability and shape in front of our defence. There's no reason to play them otherwise. But they rarely do it. And if we have any real ambition to really build on this season, we need to sign a top-class defensive midfielder. I've, I've said it so many times to you. You know it by now. But it really is the missing piece to the shape of this team. Even when you saw Matic coming on and it switched to Matic sitting behind Fred and McTominay, it, it seemed a more natural shape for our midfield. It's a more natural shape for our midfield. And Cavani, Cavani, Cavani. I'm probably going to go as far as to say I think he, he's, he's better than Ibrahimovic was at United. Sure, Ibrahimovic nearly scored 30 goals for United, but we had to build our team around him to get the most out of him. Cavani has slotted into this United team Perfectly, And I do not think it's a coincidence that Mason Greenwood now has five goals in five at the same time as Cavani is banging in goals left, right and centre. I think Cavani's influence and his impact on this team is unbelievable. And it frustrates me to think that United could have and should have signed Cavani, Cavani earlier in the summer. He was a free transfer all summer long. We didn't. We waited and waited and panicked and got him as a last-ditch signing on transfer deadline day, and it almost looked like it was going to be another foul cow, but it, it, it couldn't be further from that. Cavani's impact from the bench is astounding. His impact on this team is astounding. I think his impact on Mason Greenwood is profound. And just everywhere you look at this United team, I don't know, I, I really like watching it. What I don't like watching is Victor Lindelof sometimes. I think he was he was certainly at fault for, for that goal. And there was another occasion where he turned, I don't know who, who, who it was, it was towards the end there, where he turned what was a non-opportunity for Villa into an opportunity simply by poor physical strength, which should be the core fundamental, surely, of any centre-back. Victor Lindelof's too easily pushed off the ball. Harry Maguire going off with an injury, the first Premier League game where he hasn't played the full 90 minutes. I'm sure he'll be fine. Or maybe he won't be for Liverpool, we'll see, but I, I imagine he'll play. Rashford, I think... I I wish that he didn't have to play in the Euros and I wish he was able to get surgery and take a little bit of time off this summer because he needs it. I don't think he's played a game at 100% fitness all season long, in my own opinion. But I just can't believe this, this, this regularity with which United go 1-0 down and turn it around. I wish we had... It, it, uh, when it, came to, when it comes to Sir Alex Ferguson's Manchester United, we, we, we always we built that habit of never giving up and 
we were always capable of late goals and turning games around. And it became so, it happened so often that it just became a habit of the club. That's what's happened with United going 1-0 down away from home and turning it around. What we have to do next season onwards is build the habit of coming out, certainly at home, coming out in the first 15, 20 minutes, getting a goal, getting two goals, killing the game early and controlling the game for the rest of the match. That's something that United always used to do. Certainly against opposition like West Brom, against Aston Villa, against games where we should puff our chests out and we should try and control it in that sense. But United, look, and you've got to be happy. We're in the Europa League final. We're, one, we're 90 minutes away from this season being a real success for Oregon Solskjaer. We're second behind a runaway City team who are in the Champions League final, who are, are looking fantastic under Guardiola. And Ruben Diaz, you can see the impact of signing a top-class centre-back on that team. But it's, I don't know, I find it, I find the Premier League to watch now, I've said this for quite a while actually, I find it quite sapping. It's just, it's a bit limp. It's it, We're limping towards the end of the season. I think that now is top four. Is that mathematically secured now? But it's been secured for a while. United didn't falter, whereas all the teams around us did. We've been consistent, we've held ourselves, and we've done it again today. We've come from behind to win. And against Aston Villa, that they were, as I said, it was a fantastic goal from Torreira. I don't think Henderson really could have done anything for that. It was just a, literally an inch-perfect finish into the top corner. But Bruno Fernandes from the spot, 21 out of 22 penalties. That really is insane. Really, genuinely is insane. Fantastic. I thought Paul Pogba, actually, overall, was very, very good today. Especially considering he's... Uh, he's during Ramadan, he's, he's fasting. I don't know how he's doing it, but I just liked what I saw in that second half. We are second half FC. No team in the Premier League has scored more goals in the second half than United this season. It's a habit we've built. It's a habit I hope never goes away, but I hope it's a habit that we don't have to use every single game next season because we shouldn't be going behind all the time. That's a habit we need to break, but at least we've got the continued belief to go for the full 90 minutes and turn games around Get Cavani to sign that contract ASAP Rocky because I don't think we're going to be spending 100, 150 mil on Erling Haaland or 100, 150 on Harry Kane. I think our priority is a defensive midfielder. I've said it all along and I will continue to say it because unless we switch away from relying on McTominay and Fred in midfield, I don't think we're going to win the Premier League. That's going to hold us back until we fix it. But United, 3-1 winners today, three points, happy days. Liverpool next. Actually, no, isn't it Leicester next on Tuesday. Oh, there's so many games, I have no idea what's coming up. I think it's Leicester on Tuesday, and I think it's Liverpool on Thursday, and then we play again on Sunday. <laughs> Too many games of football. Let me know who your man of the match was. For me, who am I going to give man of the match to? I, pr I quite enjoy Paul Pogba today. But let me know what you think. Make sure you subscribe if you're new to the channel. Until Tuesday, in a couple of days, take it easy.